Welcome back to Our Life out in the country. It is a beautiful day and today we're working on the mobile home remodel again. We've done so much work and today it's finally time for drywall. I don't know how much we're going to get done today but it's beautiful out. We're starting early and I think we're ready to go. So you might be wondering why I'm outside if we're going to be doing drywall. Well first I have to start outside because I need to make some butt boards. I'll show you more of that. I have here a piece of three quarter inch OSB subfloor. I'm going to be ripping this into some smaller boards. So let me do that and then I'll show you what we're going to make with it. I cut this piece of OSB to nine inches wide and this is going to be my butt board. You're probably thinking that doesn't sound very good but it's gonna make a lot of sense when you see how it works. These are builder shims or drywall shims, and it's basically a piece of thin uh, paperboard, cardboard. And you can usually find these in the building supply stores, but they're basically for shimming out studs. If you have like a, a stud that's not straight and you're putting your drywall up, you can put these on the face, staple them on, and even out your wall. But they can also be used on this. So we're going to be putting, you know, they're about 16 of an inch thick. Right here, right here. And we're going to be stapling them to the edge of our board. Done. Now it's going to be easier to show you how this works than explain it. So let us get our first sheet up and we'll take it from there. The first drywall is up. This is like celebration time. But you guys want to know about the butt board, right? That's what you're thinking? <laughs> We're ready for that. As you can see, this might look a little odd to some of you, but you can see my drywall is floating. I didn't end it on a stud and you're saying, oh no, he made a mistake. He wasn't paying attention. No, that's by design. A butt board is a handy tool for people like us who aren't that great at drywalling. And what it's gonna do is help us hide our butt seams. So what we're doing is creating floating butt seams. That's what this is called, a floating butt seam. So this is the butt, and I don't know if you can see, but on drywall, there's a tapered edge on the long edge. This it, it slopes inward so that you have room to put your paper and your mud compound on there. But the ends are not tapered. They're just full thickness along these sides. So when you butt two sheets up together, you end up putting the tape and the compound on top and you get a hump in your ceiling. And that hump is really hard to hide if you don't know what you're doing. And I'm not great at drywalling. We're gonna put this right up here and hope the plastic isn't too tight because I didn't compensate well for that. Did I? Now, ideally you want your drywall to, to stop at the very center of your bay, but we're just going with the ceiling here. So you put this in. We're gonna screw these in like normal. And now when I put my next sheet on, what this is gonna do is bend the edge of this plywood up just slightly, just slightly. The only mistake I made was putting this plastic way too tight because I wasn't thinking about it. So let's get the next one up and we'll show how it works. Now what we're going to do is kind of push upwards. You don't want to just screw through it because you can see it's pushing it down right now. We want to push it up into place kind of gentle, gentle like and screw it. Let me put another one in for fun. All right guys, so here's how it works. Our butt joint was floating and we created this butt board to attach the two sheets together. It's just as strong as if it was on a joist. But what this does is because we put those cardboard shims here and here, is it causes the board to, to bow in toward the center and it creates its own, let's see if we can see it, creates its own taper. Can you see that gap? So you can see there's space under there. It's kind of hard to see, but you, you can see it. 
So now we created our own artificial taper. The drywall sucks up a little bit and that little bit of space gives me the space I need to put my paper and my compound when I'm taping the seams and I can float it and it'll be smooth with the ceiling. It won't be a hump. If you had them both ending on the wood like you would think naturally to do, you, you would have to create a hump to hide it and I hate that. So there's three more boards ready to go. Nine inches wide, doesn't have to be perfect. With an inch and a half strip of shim on either side. And these shims happen to be about a sixteenth of an inch thick, it's plenty. But sometimes you might find them a little bit thicker, that's fine, just don't go too thick. And this is full width 48 inch OSB. Get it as close to three quarter inch as thick as you can because that way your screws won't be poking up through the back. The ceiling is going up pretty fast. I just got my second floating butt seam going. You see how that creates that little uh, divot? Space. Yeah, space right there. Perfect. We just finished up all the seams in the bedroom. So this is actually moving right along faster than I expected. I think I wanna go ahead and tackle these butt seams that we made on the ceiling and see how well those do. Pretty happy with how my butt seams turned out. I didn't have to feather them out far at all, and they're really smooth looking. I guess that's all we have for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, take care. Bye.